Hello, my name is Jimmer Wiley. This is my podcast. I call Heard That because I don't read these books. I uh, audio book and listen to all of them. So I heard that. I don't read that. I heard that. So the book I chose was Last Night at the Lobster by Stuart Onan. And uh, this is a story about a red lobster and it's suddenly closed it was very little notice and it's the week of Christmas which is usually a really busy week and the main character is um, the general manager of the store his name is Manny and the story is of their last day closing and Manny's thoughts and interactions and feelings um, with his employees uh, customers and other things he has going on in his own in his own life so some of the things I observed from this was first pretty much immediately I noticed Manny has a constant battle with himself um, kind of like a duality of he's strict with himself he knows what's right he knows what's wrong he knows what he should and shouldn't be doing um, but he's also always tempted by what he wants to do or what what could be possible so like for instance throughout the book he makes multiple jokes of stealing money and other things and why should he care it's his last day and but no he can't do that he's a general manager he takes his job seriously and even the very last chapter of the book he makes a joke about steering stealing the giant marlin uh, from the store and he thinks about how he could even drive it home to where it'd be poking out of the windows and yeah he realized it would be a pain because it's a huge giant snowstorm and it would be cold you know all that but he also realizes he has to go in the next day and answer for the giant hole left in the wall where the marlin was to the people from headquarters that are coming and counting inventory and things like that inventory is also on his mind the entire day it's his last day but he wants to look good um for them still because he you know he takes his job seriously and he doesn't want to have a very low inventory because that could show people taking things or it could show him giving things away or whatever it could look poorly on him if his inventory is low so if he's on his last day he wants to do good so he knows what he needs to do um although he knows other ways in the back of his head that oh i could do this or i could do that i could drink a bunch of stuff no one would know i could give a bunch of free food no one would know those are the type of things and those situations happen in the book that's why i say those <clears throat> But he doesn't. He gives his crew a free lunch because that's okay. In the means of Manny's mind and Manny's ethics, and this is okay for me to do, that's okay for Manny to do. But he also, um, at the beginning of the story, he before his shift, he gets out, before he gets out of his car, he says that he smokes a bowl in his car. I'm like, okay, sounds like a drug thing. And then he puts it away. And now it's time to be serious. So he starts, he smokes a cigarette and walks in. I'm like, okay, that's a drug thing. And that's going to come back later. I'm going to mention that again here in a little bit. But that was, uh, those are some things. The duality is coming into play with Manny that I, I observed right away. Um, another thing I observed, not necessarily just about Manny, but the author there's just details and details and details on everything in the story from the the author puts you in the restaurant he, he details the tile pattern on the floor while b beneath manny's feet while he's on the toilet in the men's room um things like that or they, they put you right in the um in the story in the in the restaurant they put he put you in the story the author, that's my favorite thing about this, is all the details that the author puts you in there. He paints that picture for you. Um, another example of that would be at, like when the banter between the staff that the patrons normally aren't privy to hearing and how they communicate with each other, the inside jokes and things like that. I really enjoyed that. And I think the author did a great job of just putting you in there. For instance, Nicolette, a waitress, um had was waiting on a table with a mother and a child <clears throat> and uh, two mother <clears throat> two women and one of the women's child was misbehaving and things like that and nicolette was help, being very helpful booster seat 
um, crayons, thing like that. The kid was being bad. He was breaking the crayons, and he kept dropping his fork. So on one of the on one of the trips back to get a new fork, Nicolette walks by Manny, and she says through her teeth, "I'm going to fucking kill that kid." And uh, and um, so that's that. Just by them, the way the author put that, I can picture it. And even as I say it, I said it a second ago. I did the same thing. I said it smiling through my teeth as if Nicolette did through in the restaurant. So that's, I feel like that's such a real thing. And he did a great job of kind of taking that. Another one example of like the, the privy uh, communication between them would be like how they call older people in the restaurant, older, you know, customers, they call them cottonheads. And no one would know that. That's not a detail that we needed in the book at all for any of the story, but he put that in because he wanted to put you in the restaurant with them. So I thought that was uh, very interesting, very, uh, very like, you know, he put those details in for us and uh, you could tell. And I appreciated it as reading it or listening to it. Uh, and when he describes everything from the slush and how the sock felt of his feet, of Manny's feet from walking in the snow to the snow falling, he calls it, the author calls it um, very Charlie Brown snow. And I know exactly what he's talking about. Snow that's heavy, slowly falling, giant flakes. And that's, I was like, that's, I'm right there, I feel it, and I'm there, and I'm getting cold thinking about it. So I thought he did a really good job with all the details. Um, Manny, also another uh, observation I had of Manny's, um, was that all his memories that he had of his grandma, his abuelita, um, they they always came with positivity, or it came from positivity, and they always um, reflected that he had high expect she had high expectations for him, and when he would think of one of those duality bad type of thoughts that he shouldn't be or a comment he wanted to make but he couldn't, he would think, I know what abuelita would say, or I know she would say this, and I you know. Uh, um, specifically when it was comments um, about how he was treating or a remark he was going to make towards Dina or Jackie. Dina is his girlfriend and Jackie was his um, ex-lover and they had a relationship. So that's another uh, duality thing. He He's still, he's with Dina, but he wants to be with Jackie. So that I'm going to come into that again here. So uh, back with the, going back to the drug mention of the drugs I said he I I feel Manny's love for Jackie is a symbolism for his addiction and his love for drugs um so I because he because he relates thoughts many of his thoughts through the day to a memory involving something that happened similar with Jackie or had nothing to do with Jackie but he'll always boom go back to a memory of Jackie just because that's where he's comfortable that's where he felt happy with no reason. So could it be love, romance, love? Sure. But I just was, throughout the whole story, I was picking up on Jackie's meaning a little bit something more than just a girlfriend or um, relationship he had. For instance, while he was shopping, he went on his lunch break to shop for Dina, um, which is a nice act. He only had 30 minutes on his lunch break. His last day of work, he could have done it the next day, but he went on his last day of work shopping <clears throat> for a gift for Dina and he decides to get her jewelry and on his way down to the jewelry store he said he gets in, a, in a, like a trance a blankness and he calls it the author calls it a purposeful short circuit because he Manny allows himself to get caught in this trance and to go uh, with his thoughts you know to lean into him and he was basically just remembering the sound of Jackie's laugh in her bathroom and then how she looked when she was asleep just out of nowhere. So, okay, okay, that could be he's shopping for Dina. He's uncomfortable because he has to do something that was similar to what he did before with Jackie. He doesn't really want to do it. So he goes to what he would rather be doing, which would be drugs or be with Jackie instead of Dina. And then just a random memory comes in his head. Another time he, this happens was when the snow's getting real bad and he takes a snowblower outside for the first time in forever, and he hates the snowblower because it's old and doesn't work out the time, things like that. And he's 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 cleaning it off. He's cleaning off those, all the spider webs and cobwebs and things like that. And he says he doesn't remember. He can't even remember the last time that he used it. He, it had to be sometime 
when back when he was a Jackie, back when days were a blur, he called it. Those were the words the author used that Manny's thinking. So I'm thinking, days were a blur when you're with Jackie. That sounds very um, drug-induced time. So I think it's purposeful. I think he purposely chose those words, the author. Also, another thing I believe, I believe Manny was the man of the house growing up. Um, and then because he he constantly always says, my abuelita uh, taught him this and loved for him this way and things like that. So I catch him throughout the story. Seek, he seeks praise from the men in the book. And throughout, throughout the story, throughout the book, there are certain men that I feel like he seeks praise from. Um, he go, like his coach, his regular, he's a coach. He comes uh, out of his way to make sure his coach is always set and comfortable and can, he over and over reiterates, hey, come to the Olive Garden, I'll take care of you, come to the Olive Garden, because that's where his next job's going to be after the Red Lobster closes. Um, come to the Olive Garden, I'll make sure you're taken care of, I'll make sure you're taken care of. And when the coach gets stuck in the parking lot, Manny goes out, he makes sure he runs out, he's the guy to help him. He pushes him, he slides in the slush, he gets he gets his clothes all messy and wet and gets the coach out and he's looking up to watch coach leave in hopes that uh, he stops and says, thank you. That never happens. He keeps on going and man, he says, probably to make sure he doesn't get stuck. But I think he's a little disappointed because coach didn't give him a little wave or a little acknowledgement or a little good job or thanks or anything like that. So, he's, so that's what he, uh, he also, Keeps coaching his mind later on in the story. Um, when he buys when he buys lottery tickets, he chooses coaches. And he buys five lottery tickets for people and coaches. Um, one of the people he buys not for him, but he chooses the numbers based on sentimental numbers involving coach. Um, so that was a, one instance. Another instance of seeking a praise for another for an older man was there was an older couple that came in. And the power had went out, and Manny made sure they keep checking on, keep checking on, keep checking on them. They're still able to serve, and Mary, it, Manny made it look like he was going to do something, but really he's just walking by the table to see how everything was going. And he asked them how they're, how how are they enjoying everything. The old man said it's good, it's good, and the lady just nodded, and Manny, Manny. Uh, is pleased to hear that, but he says that's not enough. He wants them to say it's the best meal they've ever eaten and it's the most memorable because the lights were out, things like that. He wants the man to shake his hand and tell him that he's done a great job under these tough circumstances. That, But no one is telling him good job. No one throughout the whole story. Man, he's loyal. He's busting his butt. It's their last day. Everyone knows it's their last day and he's not doing that. So, um, so yeah, he's uh, wanting that praise from this old man he doesn't even know. Uh, and probably because he never got that because he's the man of the house and he had to do that. And that male figure patting on the back never was there. Um, I also noticed that he, uh, to kind of reiterate that, he was the man of the house, now he seeks praise, but he also, he takes it as his responsibility to look out for his employees, almost like it's a duty to look out for people or his employees or just people in general. Because I think it's because he lacked that from a man growing up, but also because his grandma was such, did such a great job looking after him and teaching him things and loving him. He wants to do the same thing his grandma did while also providing that support that he lacked from a male role model. So, and instances he does that is with Eddie. Eddie's the, um, the man that works for them that usually does dishes and things like that. He has crutches and things and plays the lottery a lot. And um, and Frito. But for Eddie, before we go to Frito, Eddie, he plays lottery. And uh, he asked Manny, to, hey, yeah, give me some tickets. Um, big, you know, millions you could win. You know, uh, Manny said, oh, no, you know, I'm not going to do that. But on his lunch break, he only had a couple minutes left. He trunched all the way in the slush to this gas station. Um finally bought tickets, and that's when he picked the sentimental numbers for five individuals. Uh, it was for Abuel his abuelita, Dina, his girlfriend, Jackie, his love, Coach, and Eddie. So it was the five that he chose from all people that mean something to him. He easily could have just, hey, I need five numbers, here's ten bucks, but, <clears throat> but he, he uh, chose those numbers specifically, each number. So that was pretty, that just, I don't know how much thought he goes into 
other people. Um, also, I believe, back to, like I mentioned, Frito. <clears throat> Frito, uh, I, I believe that Manny sees, he seems to see the benefit, the good in people and give the benefit of the doubt. And because he hopes, because I think he hopes people do that for him. Because he knows he has this, this drug addiction or this these issues where he makes mistakes or the, you know this duality that I was, I was talking about. So I feel like he sees that, so he wants that in return from people. Um, Ty, his the chef at the restaurant, asked, "Why did you even hire Frito? He wasn't good at anything. I, I can't. I don't like working with them. Things like that." Uh, but Manny sees himself in Frito, and he believes, you know, and he, and, and he, and Manny believes. Frito deserves more chances, so he deserves more chances as well. Um, so he offers that chance to Frito, give him a job. So he sees the possible potential in Frito that others just don't see. And I think that's also a reflection of the mirror. They actually uh, use the phrase that he, if there's nothing more that's satisfying that, he, that Manny loves more than seeing a nice, clean mirror. And that's kind of what he is kind of cleaning his own mirror, seeing himself in people. So... And I believe he wants people to see that goodness in him. So that's why he chooses to see good in people. So that's just some some things I believe uh, that I observed and then kind of interpreted through that. So something from the story, an aha moment for me that brought that symbolism to life of Jackie representing drug addiction was when he says, it is the conversation he had with Jackie at the end of the book. And he says... Is they're just in the car, no one else is around. He says to her, he says, you made me feel lucky. And she says, oh, you made me feel lucky too, if things were only different between us. And she seemed content there with no further explanation. He was just too stubborn to give up. He thinks he should ask if he can still call her, but he knows the answer. He could never figure out what to say to her. She was always a couple steps ahead of him. In some ways, he liked the challenge of keeping up, but being with her sharpened him and now without her he feels dull I, I mean that sounds like someone trying to talk drugs into loving them again or something I don't know that just that screamed this is drugs this is about drugs without her he feels dull that alone is just I don't know maybe maybe I'm missing it maybe it's uh, romantic love maybe that's that's true love and I don't know anything about I don't know anything about it. I mean, I have a wife of 10 years and two kids that I love very much, but maybe I'm missing this one. Um, so to wrap things up, I went way longer than I thought. Um, to wrap things up, this is a story about a man who, in his last day at his job. Uh, this man, Manny, he was a manager that cared for his employees and took great pride in his job while he battled things like we all do, right and wrong, inside ourselves, and the author makes you feel something, this is something, the author makes you feel something is about to happen throughout the whole book. This is about to happen, and then nothing does. The, the, the power comes back on, everyone's not sure they're going to close or not, and then a giant bus of people show up to the restaurant, but they don't eat. All they want to do is use the restroom. I'm like, oh, I thought they were going to triumph, have a, have a uh, obstacle, and they're going to triumph. No, they just come in, use the bathroom, drink water. Okay. Lottery tickets. He put a lot of effort into choosing all those numbers. Then he gathered everyone together at the end to watch it. He Everyone got drinks. It was a nice little moment between him and his team. But no one won. And no one said thank you to Manny. Also, I noticed he didn't get a thank you or a pat on the back or thanks for considering me. He just got like, oh, this is a waste of time and this and that. But they all watched. And no one said thank you. So that was another thing. Um, There's also no big chaos on... The last gathering of the crew at the restaurant, I kind of was hoping there'd be just kind of something, uh, a fight, a br I, I don't know. Um, there was a little action when, there, but we didn't get to see the action when there was a uh, Frito left. He quit in the middle of the ship. He cut the jackets and he smashed the windows, but we didn't get to see all that. They found that after they seen him leave. They checked on things and then they found it. So, yeah, and then. Nothing came from his last interaction. Nothing really satisfying for me, a reader, came from the last interaction with Jackie in the car. Sure, his feelings were absolutely crushed when she returned the ring that he proposed with in the past, and she said no.
but she kept the ring and then she returned it back to him this time. This is the last time they were going to really see each other. Um, so that was really crushing, but it still left me with wanting more. I, I don't know what, but just, I just wasn't satisfied. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Um, and this could be all intentional by the author. Like a big lead up and a build up to something climactic and then be let down, or not even be let down, just be, eh, you're going up the roller coaster and then you just stay there, you just chill. Um, so that was just something I noticed and didn't really like either throughout the whole story. Uh, something I always kind of do as I'm watching something or as I'm reading something, I always ask myself, would I watch this movie? If they made a movie out of it, would I watch this? Uh, for Last Night of the Lobster, not likely. I definitely, because Hollywood would most likely make this into a sad, romantic, drama, love triangle type movie, and that's just not something I'm into at all. But if they went the other way, and made it into a comedy where they make Manny some kind of lovable loser that doesn't get the girl, um, should be happy, isn't happy, and just like interaction would be hilarious with the crew, then maybe I'd, I'd stream it, but I don't think I'm going to the movies to see this one. Um, and then what if it were made into a 10 episode Netflix series? Would it be successful? Ah, maybe, I, maybe, I'm not really sure. I feel like it'd be a niche type Anyone that works in the food service industry would probably love this because of the details, and I think he probably knocks it out of the park because it's awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, but me, would I watch it? I definitely not. Uh, there's not enough action. There's just too few things happening that I would could really get into. I couldn't invest that much time of my <laughs> of my time for the payoff not to be worth it, and for me to not get that laugh or that that climactic scene that I was building up. Um, Overall, I root for Manny. I root for the main character. I thought the author did a great job on all the details and really put me there. And although I didn't find it super fun and super enjoying, I was engaged and I was interested in the whole time. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my close read podcast for Last Night of the Lobster. Thanks. I went way over, but thanks.